Welcome everyone. Today we embark on a journey back to the 18th century as we explore Colonial Williamsburg. Our adventure begins with a hearty breakfast and a cup of coffee to fuel our excitement for the day ahead. Once energized, we'll step into the past and stroll through charming streets lined with old houses, each telling stories of a long gone era. As we explore, one of our notable stops will be the Governor's Mansion. Did you know the Governor's Mansion once host lavish parties with up to 200 guests? We'll also encounter our nation's first president, General George Washington, and imagine his leadership that shaped the United States. After soaking in the rich history, we'll end our day with craft beer and a delicious barbecue. The perfect way to relax and reflect on our journeys. So let's enjoy breakfast, savor our coffee, and prepare for an immersive journey into Colonial Williamsburg, where history comes alive and the day ends with good food and great company. So are you ready? Because this episode is going to be a blast from the past. Good morning. This is checkout day. This is only a weekend trip. And as you can tell from my voice, I screened way too many times on the roller coasters yesterday. Stay tuned to that vlog coming soon. Got to finish up Iceland. Uh, today, I've got to check out of this hotel. We got to find some coffee and I want to try to find some good coffee. I'm going to check out some history, maybe walk around Colonial Williamsburg. And then we got to get on the road and drive back to Charleston because Ellie misses us. Let's go. Bags are packed. Cars downstairs. We out of here. Refrigerator, empty, TV, off, or around the back. destination is oh, that's a nice hotel first destination is coffee we're gonna go to a local coffee shop that says they have great pastries very fresh wow we're already inside we went back in time turned left and we are in colonial era Welcome to Colonial Williamsburg, a living museum that transports us back to the 18th century. Here we can explore over 300 acres filled with restored buildings, including shops, homes, and public buildings that capture the essence of colonial life. One fascinating fact about Williamsburg is that it was the capital of Virginia from 1699 to 1780, serving as a center of political, educational, and cultural life. Walking these historic streets, you'll encounter historical interpreters who bring the past to life, sharing stories of famous figures like George Washington and even Thomas Jefferson. Look at that. Beautiful. This is a great place. We're almost there. We're on Francis Street. Wow. Look at those houses. Freaking gorgeous. This is a beautiful area. Beautiful area. Green grass, little hills, capital coup cupolas, a beautiful building. A couple more spots. This is South Henry Street. I gotta go straight one more block. Precarious beer. I guess they had beer back in the colonial times. I'll make a right here. Oh, they have coffee. I think that's probably where they're coming from. Cute. Elva. Oh, I was going to go there too. Elva Coffee. That was on my list. It's like a weird thing here. Find a spot to park somewhere here. All right, we're street level. Okay, there's a, um, ooh, Barkery. That's Ellie. I better go. I don't know if it's open yet. We'll have to check it out. Across here. There's like nobody here. This place is gorgeous. Very, very cool. Very historic. Well, don't look at me. Look at the city. You got custard, 
milkshakes, burgers, hot dog, fresh cut fries. Our first stop this morning is at Aromas Coffee. This place is where you start your day with a delicious breakfast. You can also have lunch, great sandwiches, salads, homemade soups, and even complete your day with dinner and a glass of wine or even beer. They roast their own coffee, they bake their own pies, quiches, cookies, you name it, they have it. And their coffee, yeah, it's delicious. All right, got myself some coffee. We got a breakfast burrito, marshmallow latte. We got chorizo in there. Chorizo, avocado, egg, cheese. This is gonna be delicious. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's what I needed. $20 for this and a coffee. A little messy. The other thing I need to do is find where to park because I only have an hour parking. But we're pretty close to where we need to be. So I gotta find a parking lot and then we'll walk. All right, Aromas Coffee complete. Got our coffee, very cool cups. And uh, a lot of the shops are closed back there, but we're gonna go find a parking lot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and also hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying yourself. I like to take you with me to some of the most whimsical, wonderful places where you can learn and grow. Let's do it. We're gonna go find a parking lot and go check out Colonial the colonialness. Oh look, beautiful building. This is the Bray School, Associates of Bray. London-based charity founded a school for enslaved and free black children in 1760. Located in Williamsburg at the suggestion of Benjamin Franklin, a member of the Associates, the school receives support from the College of William and Mary. Very cool, beautiful school. I think we are here. 138, 138, no, that's not it. 8, 3, 2, that's 302. Barks, Barksdale Field. Where is the Wren building? Uh, duh, this is where we are. 154, right here. Must have been rubbed off. Wren building. So, let's go check it out. This is the Wren house. The builder was Christopher, Sir Christopher Wren, right? And he inspired the building. And this building is the oldest college building in the United States. Look at this, an institution. This is phenomenal looking. And now we're heading over to the Sunken Gardens. This is 1700s, folks. Let's see, oh, it even says stuff here, 1695. So even before 1700s, first building in College of Mary, the oldest college building in the United States. First model after Sir Christopher Wren, adapted to nature of the country by the gentleman there, having survived two wars and three fires, used for facility, faculty and college, students of the college. Wow, restored by Rockefeller in 1931. Oh, history is freaking phenomenal. Welcome to William & Mary College, where history and innovation converge. The Wren Building, dating back to 1695, stands to be the oldest college building in America. The commitment to academic excellence and leadership. Just beyond, you'll find the Sunken Garden, a vibrant hub where students gather, study, relax, and build lifelong connections. On this campus, traditions blend with modern pursuits, creating a dynamic environment for learning and growing. Don't forget, these college students, they like to have the occasional party. All right, so this is the Sunken Garden, and this was a popular spot. It's surrounded by brick, and they do basically have some chairs out here, and up there, and there, and over there, 
and it's a beautiful, relaxing setting. I mean, if I was going to school here, this is probably where I would hang out. Yeah, this is gorgeous. Very pretty. And the brick is put in like a herringbone pattern right here. And then they have like a rounded kind of rotunda stairwell and it's all sunken down about five feet. The grass is incredibly green. The birds are chirping. This is like perfectly restored. It says college camp. Colonial Patrick Henry established campgrounds for Virginia troops who were to rendezvous and train at Williamsburg. Several regiments left here in 1776 and 1777 to join General Washington's army, a college company with President James Madison. As captain, troops camped here before the Battle of Yorktown in 1781. Wow. Right here. It's all right here. So imagine troops sitting and camping. Wow. And if you live by here, you can come and relax in these chairs. Absolutely phenomenal. Even like between classes and stuff, you can just shoot over. They also have ceremonies here, like um, when they win athletic games, sports, they go here and they ring a bell. And then they also have a Yule log ceremony at Christmas. Man, what a beautiful place. What a beautiful sight to like just be in. Coming up to another statue of a colonial gentleman, statesman. Another beautiful building, by the way. All right, so this is um, Tucker Hall, named after uh, St. George Tucker, a professor in the late 18th century. This has basically served as a library for many years, and then it also became an academic building. It was repurposed for offices and even small theater, and today it looks like it's for philosophy. Hmm, it's got revival architecture. Georgian Revival Architecture. Beautiful. Super interesting fact about this school, it's also the alma mater to three U.S. presidents, Thomas Jefferson, James Monroe, and John Tyler. And you've got chancellors all here. You just imagine that this is where the chancellor was. Looks like maybe a dorm. <laughs> side now and uh, beautiful it really is a beautiful campus I actually got this tip from Amy my wife said she talked to one of her colleagues and they said that this was a nice spot it looked great really well maintained and well kept this is Washington Hall looks like uh, obviously named after the goat George Washington first president of the United States it says here, made a way out of no way. Slavery had meant the following, the dictates of others. Freedom, therefore, meant above all else, the right to chart one's own course. There's another story to be told, another story that you, have, you and I, who are black, who are going to find out about what it means to be black in this country. It's good that we remember what we can, what we contribute. We remember, what we have done to make this a better place. And we should take credit for doing that. American history is longer, larger, and more various, more beautiful, and more terrible than anything anyone has ever said about it. There's even a little space to sit and reflect here. Wow. The brick structure resembles a fireplace and also features the names of people who are known to have been enslaved by the actual university. Sometimes I just don't have the words. I'm all choked up. Lucy, 1768. Charlotte, 1768. Fanny, 1766. Unknown person. Price, 1704. Unknown person. So many unknown. Margaret, unknown man, 1755. 1757. All right, we're walking past the art museums. 
of Colonial Williamsburg Art Museums right over here this is the DeWitt Wallace Decorative Arts Museum and the Abbey Aldrich Rockefeller Folk Art Museum so if you have time and you want to walk around and see a museum check it out it's pretty nice building they also have these barrels scattered throughout the town makes it more colonial <laughs> This is like kind of what I think of when I think of Virginia and really kind of heading up to the northeast. You just got these beautiful trees. That one over there is pretty leafless but probably just got pruned maybe. And then you have these rolling hills and these beautiful fences. Just stunning. Bell going off in the background, birds chirping. Couldn't be a be more beautiful morning. A colonial house here. We are just in colonial eras. It is like we step back in time. This house tells a story. You have moss on the roof and it's underneath this giant oak tree. So if you come to Williamsburg, you can get the ticket, which I didn't get because I don't have time, but the tickets have entry to these shops where you have artisans and craft workers telling you how they lived back in those era. You know, like we're blacksmiths and weavers, gardeners, things like that. And your ticket gets you in there. And you can kind of just wander around. Like here, you have a garden, beautiful garden here. I think probably requires a ticket. I don't know. What do you think? Definitely a ticket, ticket required. But the things that are not required is looking at this beautiful church and seeing the beautiful trees and the sun is shining and you can see the garden you can get some cactus in there wow flowers are beautiful so stunning and that's what you do if you have more than a couple days i suggest you buy the ticket online just do a google search and there's plenty of ticket vendors out there that will let you buy a ticket to be used here it's like some demonstrations here Hello, governor. <laughs> We've made it to the governor's house. Take a look. We're going to get closer. Wow. Huge kind of open, um, open front lawn. These were pretty popular in the colonial times. We have them, all the plantation houses had these big grand entrance where maybe the horse and carriage would go down either side of the road and it's lined with beautiful trees and uh, yeah, lots of nice, beautiful views. Let's take a closer look. Completed in 1722, this grand residence serves as the official home of the Royal Governors of Virginia. Imagine the year is 1754 and you're a guest at the Governor's lavish parties. Hosting up to 200 guests fills with magical music, laughter, and the aroma of an exquisite feast. As we walk through the gardens, we notice the intricate woodwork and elegant furnishings authentic to the period. This mansion wasn't just a symbol of power, but also played a crucial role during the American Revolution, housing the last royal governor, John Murray. Beautifully maintained gardens, both functional and decorative, this mansion is a gateway to understanding the colonial past. Oh, there's a little one too. <laughs> Here with General Washington. Little one the same breed? Yes. Hanging out. Friend oh my God, we just saw President Washington, the first president of the United States. And I had a conversation with him from the future. What the heck? <laughs> you never know what you're going to run into on the road. <sighs> he had his white horse there. Alright, I hear some barking coming from inside here, so I'm going to say that this is a, a real person's house in the current day Colonial Williamsburg. It's a beautiful one. They have a nice yard. Very thick bushes in the back, nice grass. 
Stunning. Okay, we're here on the corner of Queen and Nicholas Street. It's, it's gorgeous. I just saw the horse and carriage come down. You have beautiful colonial streets and homes. People actually live here. Some people don't. Just getting photos, walking around, checking out the gorgeous architecture, brickwork, and some Dutch style homes, colonial homes, Tudors. And actually the sign says cold drinks this way. So I don't know what, what that means. Does that mean cold soda? Or does that mean cold beer? Or does it mean cold wine? Let's see, maybe we can find out. Wow, look at this building. Oh, maybe there's a storehouse down here. Oh, all right. We got soda machines and, oh, so hot. It's, get, it's like 80 something degrees today. So we're gonna get it and it has modern technology and we can swipe right here. All right, we got a Coke. Have a little sip of Coke and move on. We gotta get moving soon. It's only fitting, Coke. Pro tip, if you're coming here in the spring or summer, it can be very hot, so go back there and get a nice cold bottle of soda. If you're at the governor's house, it's just down the street, right next to this building. You just kind of go to the next road and uh, down the hill, accepts debit or credit. I've seen a lot of dogs walking around here, so super pet friendly. Definitely have to go back and get Amy and Ellie and come back here for a longer retreat and just kind of roam. I do want to mention that it is pricey everywhere I went here, whether it was Bush Gardens or Williamsburg or outside of Bush Gardens, it was pricey. So just be aware if you want to save money, just go off, go off site a little bit or bring your food and get an Airbnb and eat breakfast in the hotel if you can get one that has food included. To effective use of this weaponry, I would very much like to not have to completely change over every infantry gun on the battlefield while still getting that standardized ammunition. So I'm just gonna make my new gun the same ammunition as the old gun, because that's not a good plan. We thought it was too, I know. Yeah. We're so smart. Well, let's say accurate range. Not because they're accurate. We are using them at that range to do what's called testing the enemy. Right? So uh, that range is about here to the uh, uh, Randolph house right there, 250 yards away. Right? So if I saw an enemy right there, I would have my guys line up, I would have us load, I would have us fire to see what you would do. Right? Because if you're trained soldiers, you're going to turn around, you're going to look at me, you're going to acknowledge that I'm 250 yards away from you, and you're going, there's no way they were aiming. Right? And you're going to form into ranks and you're going to start coming out. And I'm going to go, those are trained soldiers, let's respond accordingly. Got some seeds, some baskets. Blankets, nice blankets. Peanuts, Virginia peanuts, cheese balls, chips, candles, and mats. There's also an art fair, art market right here. Arts on the square. Definitely more to see here. Have to come back. Just not enough time in the world. And like I said, life is short. And when you're trying to see it all, man, you're not gonna see it all. So you just gotta kinda wander and see what you can see. We saw Washington, we saw the art museums. We didn't have time to go in them. You could spend weeks here and not see it all. We haven't even gotten to Jamestown. I think we're gonna come back and do all that, spend more time here. I think Ellie would really appreciate the walks. Maybe we'll come in the fall for a fall trip. Might be beautiful that time. Come in like end of October, November. 
we're ending our day here in Colonial Williamsburg at Precarious Brewing. Precarious Beer Project. And I have a brown ale, six ounces, and a red ale, six ounces. So we'll try that out. That's gonna wrap it up. I gotta get back to my car and skedaddle to Charleston. Coming home to Amy and Ellie. Miss you guys. This one, it didn't record, so I'll do it again. But this is the red ale. It's a little bitter. And I even said, cheers. Cheers to you. Mm. Nice and cold, because it's now like 85 degrees out. Stay hydrated. This is uh, very coppery and like a little bitterness to it. And then the brown ale. Cheers. Mm. I love this place. It's got a dog on the wall, a nice tapestry of a dog. Probably pet friendly outside on the patio. Get a nice water bowl for Ellie. Nice glass of ice water. Large place. Look at this. Place is gigantic. They got a game room over there. They have some merchandise, and then the ceiling is all lights. It's like a garden. Very cool. And then this is the from the art festival. This is the pattern I got Amy. I love like the sun and the hot air balloons and the bird houses. It's got some cardinals on there. Our favorite. Sunflowers, which was Lindy's favorite, I think. Dragonflies. This is this is a good luck piece right here. So we'll use this for our dining room. So pretty, lots of nice birds, flowers, great. Excellent morning in Colonial Williamsburg. We saw the William and Mary College. We walked around, saw the Governor's Palace. We met General Washington, So an art fair. Man, action-packed day. Carrius Brewing also has a back patio. So if you do have a dog, you can bring it with you. I see one right there. He looks so good, little puppy. Very pet friendly. Just down the street, we're headed to Pierce's Pit Barbecue. Mouth-watering flavors, southern hospitality come together for an unforgettable experience known for slow-cooked meats, bull pit barbecue. Y'all, be prepared. There are lots of people that come to this place, and it's very busy. Also, lots of delicious sides like onion rings, macaroni and cheese, and potato salad. Be prepared. There are lots of people that come to this place, and it's very busy. All right, I ordered my food. I got the brisket, collard greens. I also want to point out there's plenty of seating outside because the place is so busy, it fills up quick on the inside. I also got Brunswick stew here. I met a couple in Bush Gardens yesterday who said I must go here. So if you're watching, I went and I used your coupon for 10% off. They were nice enough to give me 10% off. And here's the Brunswick stew. This is my spread. So I'm gonna eat this and get on the road. Let's, let's see what it's like. I'm gonna try the brisket by itself. I got so much on here that. Hmm. It's very tender actually. Hmm, that's really good. I'm gonna put some pickles lined here. So it slides some pickles in. And then I gotta figure out how to eat this thing. So much brisket on it, I won't be able to fold it. One, two, three, four, five slices. This barbecue was perfectly executed. And as busy as they are, amazing. Link in description. All right, that's my sandwich. Ooh, that's a big one. That is a big one. See, it's gonna be messy. Hmm. That's a for real 11 out of 10. Definitely one of the best. Also try this Brunswick stew. So this is made with chicken and the ones we've had in Charleston are usually made with um, pork super tangy very sweet and it's actually more potato heavy more vegetable heavy 
It's got green beans, carrots. That's it there. Green bean, carrots, potatoes, corn, lima beans, peppers. Yeah, much different than what I'm used to, but it's also very freaking delicious. Very good. Probably give this a 11 out of 10. Give that an 11 out of 10, and then I gotta try the collards. <clears throat> also recommended by the cashier was the collard greens. These are huge. I don't know, they don't cut them, so I'm gonna eat them in the whole leaf. Messy. These are more savory. I like mine a little more sweet. But, um, not bad. I'd probably give these like a 7 out of 10. All right, that's all she wrote. We had a great day visiting all the sites here in Colonial Williamsburg. Started out with a great cup of coffee. Man, saw some historic sites. Checked out the governor's palace. We saw General Washington, and I gotta go. So hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and then we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye, dudes. I don't wanna stay here, no. Ain't gonna keep it low.